This is a video for a course I'm teaching on introductory proof writing. And this is gonna be a fairly short one where I translate the classical statement of the pigeonhole principle into another one which has to do with injective and surjective functions. So before we look at this new version of the pigeonhole principle, let's look at the classical statement. So it says, if you try and place m pigeons into n holes where m is bigger than n, then there will be one hole with at least two pigeons. So let's maybe look at an example of that real quick. So let's suppose that we have three pigeons. So there we've got one, two, three pigeons, but we've only got two holes. And we're trying to put those pigeons into the holes. But notice, if we try to put these three pigeons into those two holes, then it's pretty clear that there will be at least one of these holes with two pigeons. There's no way around that. In fact, there could be one hole with three pigeons and one that is empty. That's not precluded from this situation. Okay, and then maybe a less common but kind of equally valid way to look at the pigeonhole principle is as follows. If you, play, if you try and place m pigeons into n holes where m is less than n, then there will be one hole which is unfilled. So let's maybe look at an example of that as well. So let's say now we've got two pigeons and we have one, two, three holes and we're trying to put these two pigeons into the three holes, but notice there's no way around it. There will always be one of these holes which is unfilled. Okay, so now that we've got this classical statement of the pigeonhole principle, let's maybe go ahead and look at another equivalent version that has to do with sets and functions. So we wanna suppose that A and B are finite sets and F from A to B is any function. So if the cardinality of A is bigger than the cardinality of B, in other words, the number of elements in A is more than the number of elements in B, then it is impossible for F to be injective. And let's just recall that injective means one to one. And then if the cardinality of A is less than the cardinality of B, in other words, the number of elements in A is less than the number of elements in B, then F is not surjective. And let's recall that by surjective, we mean onto. And in a previous video, we looked at careful definitions of injectivity and surjectivity, so we won't do that here. So now that we've got this set and function version of the pigeonhole principle, I wanna look at an example. So this is kind of a classic example. It says there are at least two people living in Virginia that have the same number of hairs on their heads. So the solution to this is going to be built off of two facts. And these are facts that you could maybe easily look up. And the first fact is the population of Virginia, which that's the state that I live in right now. That's approximately 8.5 million people. And then the second fact is that the maximum number of hairs on a given human's head is one million. So I guess this is like a biological fact that it's impossible for a human head to have more than one million hairs. Now, you could do this with the classical version of the pigeonhole principle, but I wanna do it with this functional version of the pigeonhole principle, since right now in the class I'm teaching, we're looking at functions. So let's define A to be the set of all people in Virginia. And then we'll define B to be the set of possible numbers of hairs on heads. So I guess that would be zero if you're completely bald, one, two, three, all the way up to one million. So notice that there are eight and a half million elements in A there are 101 million elements in B. So if we can define a function from A to B, we know that it will not be injective. So let's define a function H from A to B, where H of A equals the number of hairs on person A's head. So that's definitely an appropriate way to define a function. But now we know that H is not injective 
by the previous proposition, but H not being injective means that there exists X and Y in A such that H of X equals H of Y. So that's essentially the definition of not being injective. But now let's translate that statement about H to a statement about people. And we can do that by saying that X and Y, so person X and person Y have the same number of hairs which is exactly what we wanted to show. I guess I should point out here that this X and Y satisfy the rule that X is not equal to Y. That's the whole thing about injectivity is you have two values of the function that come from different places in the domain. Okay, so I think we'll stop there.